Whereas in the previous episode, the tribes in the forest told me I could learn more about the Nagas or Valir if I could find a giant split rock within a hundred mile radius. They had heard about the giant split rock from their ancestors, from their previous generations, but they had no idea where this is actually located. I could find several giant split rocks around the world when I performed a Google search, but I could not find anything online within a hundred mile radius from the Jawadu Hills. So I'm going to have to start searching by physically exploring the hundred mile radius. The search is taking me far and wide. I'm exploring some of the very remote parts of the world where there is nothing, no trees, no buildings, and no human population. Will I find this giant split rock somewhere here? I see no trace of any rocks nearby. I have been searching for many days and then I stumbled on something very interesting. Remember the tribes refer to the beings as Valiers? There are places named after the Valier. There are two villages called Kir Valley and Mail Valley and people claim that the gods, the Valier, began their first contact and communication with humans here and set up these two villages. This is the village of Kir Valley and locals say that the split rock is located somewhere here in this rocky area. They refer to the split rock as Ratakal, which means bloodstone in Tamil language and tell me a strange story which I will tell you in a minute. And then suddenly in a distance, I see a gigantic rock cut in half, split as though by divine intervention. There is no doubt that this is the rock the tribes were talking about. More importantly, we can see a metal fence in the middle of nowhere at the base of the rock. This is a good sign. Something important must be there. This is why they have put a large fence around it. Of course, geologists will claim the rock split by natural means, but is it really a natural occurrence? Or are we simply convincing ourselves that it is natural because it is impossible for human beings to do this. Was it split using some kind of advanced technology by the Valiers or Nagas? If we look at it from the top, it looks like a clean cut, as though somebody cut a loaf of bread into two halves. It must have been so easy to do this. The cut looks so smooth it is unlikely the split happened by natural means. It is a very unique experience to walk in between these giant split rocks. I can't explain it with words. From the ground, the rock looks truly gigantic. It can be used as a shelter, a place to rest or sleep. I feel like an ant stuck between two slices of bread. Was it some kind of a safekeeping place to hide from others or for doing secretive things? This whole structure is about 50 feet tall and 60 feet wide. The two pieces look like wings of a large bird. The villagers have strange stories about them. They call this bloodstone because they claim there is a secret opening at the top of the rock which is covered by a rock lid and blood oozes out of this opening from time to time. If we observe the rock closely, we can see that it does seem to have traces of reddish liquid. It almost looks like engine oil. Rocks do hold water and sometimes release the water along with other particles, which is probably why locals think 
it is blood and call it bloodstone. But what is surprising is that there is something on top which looks like a lid covering an opening. The problem is there is no way villagers could have climbed this and seen what's on top. I'm able to show you because I use a drone. How do the locals know about this lid even though they've never seen it? More importantly, how do the tribes who live in Javadu Hills, who have never come out of the forest, know about the split rock? What is inside this fence? Why do they have to put a fence around a rock which is in the middle of nowhere? We can see signboards which belong to the archaeology department. When I zoom in with my camera, I realize there are cave paintings inside. These prehistoric paintings are the evidences which may help us understand about Valier or Nagas. But how am I going to access what's inside? Looking around, I don't see any gatekeeper or even a phone number on these signboards to make a call. The archaeology department is struggling to preserve these ancient treasures while vandals are destroying it by writing their own names on them. Look how they have painted their names right on top of the valuable prehistoric rock paintings. This is why archaeology department has put a massive fence around. When I zoom in with my camera through the fence, I could see one strange cave painting which stood out. It's not completely clear as this picture was shot from a distance, but when I digitally enhanced the color and brightness, a startling image appears. There is a large circle which has a smaller circle inside of it. There is a stick figure sitting inside. Next to it is yet another similar structure, a circle with a stick figure inside. Is it possible that these are UFOs with extraterrestrials inside? Each craft has a small attachment which has some stripes like the steps of a ladder. I don't know what this is. What's interesting is that this is shown on the sky because there are two human beings shown at the ground level who are also stick figures but with smaller heads. You can even see that these humans are pointing to the UFO and appear to be running. Around the spacecraft there seem to be smaller lines as though dirt or flame is flying around it. Is it possible that this was painted by cavemen after they first saw the Valier coming from the sky? Did they actually come in a UFO-like spacecraft? What is bizarre is that what we see here is exactly what I saw in a cave painting in a place called Onake Kindi two years ago. Onake Kindi is about 400 miles from Kir Valley, but it has some of the oldest rock art in India. In that place, the painting is much more vivid. It clearly shows a UFO or a spacecraft, which is shown as a circle inside a circle, and two figures carrying a ladder-like object. Did cavemen who lived many thousand years ago witness the arrival of ancient astronauts and create these paintings? How else can we explain this? In most prehistoric sites, we do not see one isolated rock with rock art. You will usually see multiple rocks in the same area with rock art. So I must search for other rock paintings which I can access. What I'm looking for is overhanging rocks or rock shelters. Look at this area. India is a heavily populated country but this place does not even have a house anywhere close by. In the previous video, we saw that Javadu Hill was also completely inaccessible. Why were these prehistoric sites set up 
in these impossible locations. This area has no fruit-bearing trees and the land does not yield much crops. Locals claim that the gods, the Nagas, taught them how to breed animals and rear cattle. They also claim that Nagas invented boats and taught human beings how to travel in water bodies like rivers and even seas. As I keep walking, I find something which is a good sign. There are fences put up around an overhanging rock, but the fence is not complete and there is a way for me to access it. There is more rock art inside, but as you can see, it is nearly impossible to access it. These places can be reached only by crawling and I have to manage this in a tight space. What's in my hand? A spray bottle with pure distilled water. It is part of my kit. I always carry this. If you ever come across cave paintings or rock art, the best way to see them is by spraying distilled water. And please do not touch them with your hands. I begin spraying water and the paintings start to appear. The space is too small for two people, so I have to get the camera from my friend. I'm gonna try my best to show you how this looks. As I spray more water, I realize that this is a treasure trove for archeologists. There are not one or two paintings. This whole rock face is covered with prehistoric art. This figure looks like an alien. Watch how there is nothing visible, but once I begin spraying water, look at the magic. As I spray more water, more and more paintings appear. If you think what I'm doing here is hard work, imagine how hard it must have been for the person who created these paintings. If historians and archeologists are right, he would have been a caveman using his bare fingers to make these paintings. Most of the paintings are not clear, but there are a series of strange looking figures. They appear to have elongated heads. Some even appear to have wings. There are two symbols which look very interesting. One looks like this, which looks remarkably similar to Damru, a musical instrument. The damru is considered the oldest musical instrument in the world and can produce a trance-like effect if you listen to it long enough. The other symbol looks like a cross wire, a circle with two lines intersecting at right angles. We could also call it a chakra or a wheel, but I'm not sure what these symbols meant to the person who painted them. This is a fantastic place, but unfortunately the rock paintings are not clear and have partially faded away. It needs to be examined with x-ray technology so I can get a better idea. If you think crawling inside this is the hard part, you are wrong. The hardest part is coming out of this. My whole body is bruising against the rock bed but I need to explore the place more and see if there are any more rock paintings. Again, I see a fence in this area, so when I went in, it is clear that this rock shelter must have some paintings. As I enter this area, the very first painting I find is clearly visible, even without me having to spray water on it. We can see a figure with elongated face, like a birdman sitting on top of a horse. Another figure, which also has a strange face, is holding the reins of the horse. There's a third figure talking to both of them with his hands wide open. It is very interesting to note that none of the three look human. They're shown with elongated faces with pointed snouts. 
You can think of them as snake people or even bird people, depending on how you look at the painting. Perhaps these are the Nagas. Locals believe that the Nagas domesticated animals and taught human beings how to breed cattle and raise other domestic animals. The figure in the middle has two antenna-like wires sticking out of his head. What was the purpose of these extensions? As I began spraying water, I found a ton of paintings appear, and they're much clearer than the other rocks we saw. Spraying water and looking at what comes alive is an exciting job. Here is a symbol of crosswire or a wheel with four spokes. I've shown you a lot of amazing ancient Indian sites, but now we are seeing that even prehistoric sites in India are breathtaking. The entire rock is full of paintings. Here we can see four Nagas standing upright almost in a straight line. It appears as though they are holding hands. What are they doing? If we look carefully, we can see that they are standing on a small boat or kayak and one of them is holding a long pole which was used as a paddle to control the boat. Remember I said locals believe that Nagas taught them how to travel the seas and rivers? Perhaps all these stories are based on truth after all. But there is something else that is mind-boggling. Look at this painting. It looks like some complex symbol when viewed like this. But if we rotate it 90 degrees, we can see something rather interesting. It is a boat with twin propellers. This is unbelievable because we use this technology today and we do consider it high-tech machinery. And there's no way prehistoric men could have used such a technology. Think about it. It does not make sense that human beings knew propeller technology but also lived in caves at the same time. They must have seen someone else use this technology. Archaeologists have a logical explanation when it comes to cave paintings. When they see cows shown in the paintings, they claim that ancient men painted it because they saw the cow. This is why we see paintings of all these animals. However, archaeologists will completely deny the same logic when they see something advanced. When they see paintings which look like UFOs, aliens or a boat with propeller system, archaeologists will completely deny this logic. They will immediately claim all this came out of cavemen's imagination. Well, they have to because if they talk about gods, aliens or advanced technology, they would face some serious repercussions from the government and their community. Here, we can see a series of weird shapes which make no sense. One looks like a TV antenna from the 80s. This one looks like the Damru, the musical instrument of Lord Shiva. The next one looks like the letter M, followed again by Damru. The last one is a circle with an X mark inside, looking like a cross wire. These symbols must mean something important, but I hope you can tell me what they mean. Here is a circle with plenty of radial lines coming out. It looks like a spinning circle. It could be the sun, moon, a wheel, or even a UFO radiating light. All these are just guesses because the drawing is just too general. It does not have any specific feature. Finally, there is a figure which looks very different. It has an elongated face like the other Nagas we saw, but it also has some antenna-like extensions coming out of its head. 
This is very interesting because we don't know if it is some kind of antennas or if it's a mere hairdress. Remember, many Nagas are portrayed with hood-like protrusions on the top of their heads. We don't know if this is a predecessor of those portrayals. In the previous episode, we visited the stone huts or prehistoric dolmens, which locals claimed were built by Nagas. And they told us that I would understand more about the Nagas if I found the giant split rock. So, we have seen some important paintings here. One, which looks like UFOs with extraterrestrials inside. Most importantly, we have seen these Nagas. They have elongated faces like birds and have hands which are almost like wings. Remember, a lot of times Nagas are portrayed with wings and are said to be capable of flight. We have seen Valier or Nagas as paintings, but mainstream archaeologists and historians will claim that these birdmen are in fact human beings. Even though we see them using advanced technology like propellers, experts will continue to deny this and will insist that these are humans. To verify if these figures are really gods, I need to find some solid evidence other than these cave paintings. Otherwise, all these evidences cannot be pieced together. Are these the real Nagas? To get some conclusive proof, I need to start searching again for some fresh evidences in this area. Something that will put all the pieces of the puzzle together. What will I find? Will it reveal the existence of gods? I'm Ravin Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I will talk to you soon. Bye.